Well, hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Points of Interest podcast. My name is Josh Hawks. I am the 303 Ninja, and right over there, he is my podcasting partner for life. He is the other guy. It's Mr. Francis Fernandez. Exciting. Oh, I love it. Actually, I had a whole, we are, we are so. I had a whole a- different introduction written down. And I just so used to saying it the same way and trying to incorporate new ways to say it. And I just completely looked at what I wrote down and just just didn't do it. So when I did podcast by myself, I used to do, I always have a catchphrase, right? Like you always start the show the same way, right? It's always welcome to the thing. Mm -hmm. And then the catchphrase, right? Online friend simulator, because everyone can use a friend, even online, right? Hmm. Like the points Geek of interest. Love radio. Yeah. The, but like, what's points of interest on that podcast? It's the most generic podcast the on the internet. most generic podcast on the internet. Yes, and that's because then I rushed, and then I forget to say that part. See? Well, I, you normally like to get into it, like, right off the bat, you know? Right. Say, hey, you do the thing. You introduce. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, hello, ha, 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 you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, that's the tough part. It's like, oh, right. well. I, I, but, I, you know, I'm try, I always try to keep it fresh and trying to, you know, mix it up. As you should. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, so. I think so. But, um, yeah, no, I uh, am good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am well. I am well. I, I think I'm good anyway. At least, at least so far anyway, everything seems to be running fine. Well, look, we have a chat room. Uh, there's people in there. Hello, we, Ginger. We have. I'm certain. We have capabilities of. Someone bring- will tell us. Huh? This is. I'm certain someone will tell us what's going on. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, we also have capabilities of you joining in on our show as well. If you want to join in all the information's at the top, if you want to connect with us immediately though, that phone number at the top, you can call that You can connect right with us if you want. Um, or not. I like that there's a ticker. I like, yeah. yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, what I don't like Francis is something I have up first and I, I have more of a question of why, but. Oh, wow. Right off the bat. Yeah. Why not do it? Uh, well, because there's we got a lot to tackle here. Um, but why have they announced a Karate Kid Five? Uh, uh, well, here's the question: Is Karate Kid Five going to be based off of the Jaden Smith movie with Jackie Chan, or is this no? Don't because have it's Jackie Chan, anymore, it's be... Jackie Chan Five or <laughs> Jackie Chan Five. It's Karate Kid Five. So we're that's that's the continuity of the original. The original uh, series. So it's hit, set to hit, so it's filming. It has to be because it's set to hit theaters on June seventh, two thousand twenty-four. Oh wait, though no filmmakers nor details were revealed. The new entry is described as the return to the original Karate Kid franchise, which probably means, oh no, they're gonna are they gonna are they gonna incorporate Cobra Kai, the TV show? Who I mean, why wouldn't they? The Karate Kid Five. Why wouldn't I? I mean, I figure that's, I mean, it was kind of rhetorical, but I think that's why they're going to make a new movie because uh, everybody loves Cobra Kai so much. Yeah, but not everyone watched Cobra Kai. is watching Cobra right. Kai. Right. So, like, you're going to go into this fifth movie with Billy Zabka and uh, daniel San here, and you're going to have them doing stuff, and you're going to be like, why is why is seventy year old Ralph Macchio <laughs> pretending he knows karate? Right, right. <laughs> Even though he looks like he's in his forties, still it doesn't matter. The dude is like sixty five or or whatever. Like I don't know. I, it, I think it's dumb. Personally, yeah. I I I, I wasn't like too it. thrilled about that I myself when I heard about it. Unless. I will accept the show. I will accept the movie if they um, incorporate a lot of '80s nostalgia, because then I'm in. Then, then I'm 100 percent in. That they have to do sure. a lot of '80s nostalgia. Yeah. Like you can bring in like uh, anyway, Ali Sheedy or Kirstie Alley love. or whoever that was. It was um. Oh no! It, oh Elizabeth God! Elizabeth Shue. She was um in. 
Elizabeth Shue, yeah. It's yeah. Elizabeth Shue, yeah. I knew if I hit enough 80s, 80s names, it would hit me. I want there to be a weird offhand connection to uh, Karate Kid and Back to the Future. Because <laughs> I think Elizabeth Shue was in both. Yeah, so. yeah. She, I think Elizabeth Shue replaced the first actor, actress. Oh. Uh-oh. It uh, looks like Ginger's playing the role of Yomelia by going, Yo! Yo! Very gangsta. But, yo, you froze. I don't think we're frozen now. I mean, I have no idea. I, I'm i fine on this end. But I, I, I'm looking. I'm, well, I'm watching the Twitch, and it, it looks okay. okay. I mean, it's loading, but it looks okay. I mean. Oh, man. I, I There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. Well, one day. One day. One day. Uh, Ginger says uh, this coming Saturday she is committing to watching all 10 episodes of the new season. I know. I need to watch it. I'm going to be watching Avatar original. Like the cartoon? Flavor 3D Avatar. No, the James Cameron oh. epic. The called, tree The uh, tree sex Frank movie? Two the, tree, the tree sex movie? They don't have sex with a tree. They don't have they? sex with animals. With the two... No, because they have the they, they they connect their tube to these animals that fly, mm. and so they have like weird tube sex with these animals tube on sex. Pandora, as they as they as they mine for unobtainium, you know. Mm. Even though it's a lie, it is obtainium because they are able to obtain it. But, you know, unobtainium. Uh, uh, yeah. So not not too excited over here for either one of us apparently for Karate Kid. So we can. Not oh, no, look, no. not look, not really look forward to I that. Know, possibly, like, I don't know. I'm not. I don't care. I mean, unless I don't know. I mean, because I don't look. Ralph Macchio is great. I like him as an actor in Cobra Kai, but they they force him to do fight scenes, and it's embarrassing because mm. <laughs> he's obviously old right. and obviously not limber. And it's really sad to just watch him do like the slowest of punches and the slowest of kicks. And he's supposed to be like this martial arts master. Mm. And he fights guys who actually know how to fight, like Billy Zabka, who knows how to fight still, right? Who still has that kind of spryness to him. Right. And it's just like, this is sad. Stop making, stop making, uh, stop making Daniels on fight anybody. Just leave him alone. So, Ralph Macchio, just sit, sit down, relax. You're okay. You don't have to do it. Bring, mm. bring back, bring back Jaden Smith. No oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. Right. Uh, well, speaking of sequels, Francis, uh, there was a sequel thing that kind of mm. got leaked out a little bit that uh, people didn't. So, some people wanted to see. I think a lot of people wanted to see, and a lot of people didn't want to have it leaked. Oh well, yeah, nobody likes leaking. No, no. But, I mean, let me think. Yeah, no. I can't I guess think of pens, right? Uh you fucking <laughs> I need to I need to move <laughs> I need to move the rim shot <laughs> from the page it's on to the page that we're using on my soundboard because uh, or or yeah, or <laughs> like a a sound bite of of uh Chris Hardwick saying points. Can, that, can I just say that's the worst name for a product? Though, isn't that the worst name for a product? Depends. Like, adult diapers. What are you going to call them? Depends. Depends on what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what is, what it, like. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, if you wear, if you wear well, them to a party and somebody, you know, looks at you and you, you haven't been to the bathroom, do you ever go to the bathroom? You go, oh, it depends. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. Well, I'm certain that joke has been used. But yes, uh, yeah, leaks. We don't like leaks. No, yeah, leaks. Leaks aren't good. And uh, honestly, uh, the the Grand Theft Auto Six leak that happened what last week? What what happened? Is there a ghost in your house or a cicada? <laughs> no, I just want to make sure my air is on because it's warm. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, Grand Theft Auto Six <laughs> got leaked. Uh, I watched a few minutes of it. I think it looks pretty good for how early in develop it, development it is. Uh, clearly not all the characters were 
even textured. So, yeah. uh, uh, I need to, I need to comment on Ginger's comment on Steven Seagal. I need to. Oh yeah, she says yes. he wants low and sluggish. Watch Steven Seagal. God fat hardly moves. So, I keep getting I keep getting recommended on Instagram, um, like reels and clips of Steven Seagal, like teaching classes on his Aikido. Aikido, yeah. And it's really just him standing around. With his hands kind of flailing and the guy just kind of going with it, like mm-hmm. going with the movement as if he's actually controlling the guy's movement. Yeah, yeah. But you could just tell by the way he's slowly moving around and how he's kind of really jello like and just like, uh, all right, I'm going to flip you now, okay? Me, Steven Seagal, lawman, is going to flip you. And he <laughs> like flips the guy. Right, but he doesn't do anything. He just kind of moves his arm upward, and the guy does the flipping for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad and pathetic. I really feel bad. I'm really like, oh man. Yeah, but you know what? The guy used to be. A... Yeah, go, go keep going. You're on. You're on track. You're on track. He, yeah, I was just gonna say he used to be an action star. Like he used to do these move these two word movies where he would be like, just you know, he'd be on it sort of. And now it's just it it's really sad and pathetic just to see him do his karate moves. Well, I mean, do you remember when he he tried to be a sheriff? Or yeah, a de- a, a that's deputy? why that's why I say he's lawman. Yeah. yeah. But you know, in the early nineties, you couldn't you couldn't beat a good Seagal movie. You know, you and your friends no, you on, on a sleepover night or something, and you just wait for all the mm-hmm. arm breaks and you know. The ridiculousness of how he's gonna rip this guy's throat out, and he actually does by the end of the movie. And yeah, I mean, they there were not. I I rewatched one scene I think recently, and it's a lot of cuts mm-hmm. when he's moving, like he's doing the moves and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you can make anyone look good if you're gonna do like twenty cuts to do like a single arm bar or whatever. It's right. like, oh yeah, the guy looks like amazing. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, it, it, it you couldn't beat those movies, but then, then he discovered Twinkies or Dunkin' Donuts or oh no, he he became a he became a Russian citizen. Uh, oh yeah, I remember. I I forgot about that, remember but that? I do remember. I do you remember when he thought he was a Native American? Thought, right. Yeah. 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 He thought he was all sorts of things, yeah. and. He just, and then he, you know, because he was a grandmaster, right? He was an Aikido grandmaster. And he he just, he had all of these thoughts go through his head. <laughs> and it's like, no, Steven Seagal, you're just. You're just some yeah. guy from Philly or something. But, you know, look, Shaquille O'Neal was a sheriff for a while. And like a couple other, so like. Our Eric sport, Estrada. Right? Was, uh, Eric Estrada, yeah. There was like a whole, there was a whole team of B-list celebrities who did like a reality show where they were cops, they were beat cops. So, whatevs. Yeah, whatevs. I I don't know, but uh, (laughs) yeah, yeah. GTA Six looking good so far. Yeah, they they uh, called the FBI to find out who leaked. No shit. The the FBI is actually looking into who leaked the stuff. Wow. It's like. That seems a bit extreme. <laughs> it seems a bit. I know, right? I mean, yeah. GTA. I just it was funny on the Facebooks the other day. I mentioned right after GTA Five came out, mm-hmm. what 11, 12 years ago. I was like, yeah, someone should buy this game for me. And here I am now. I'm finally, I'm excited it. for six. Actually, yeah. the, the the single player stuff looks really good. One day I'm going to get around to playing the actual single player game of GTA Five, but. You know, I'll get it's her answers. Good. Yeah, like, I, I'm a, sure it is. I, I don't doubt that. I'm just saying. Like, I just it's an interesting I, story. What's that? It's an interesting story. Oh, I thought you said it, you create your own story. I mean, well, I'm all in for it. No, yeah. I'd be yeah, a lot more. Exactly, I'd know. be a lot more interested in GTA if you, it was a lot more open world. Not I mean, a lin- I mean, no, it technically is. It technically is, but no linear story. Oh, oh you're you just want the you're Skyrim. just Skyrim. You. Like you get some sort of a backstory of like you know why you're the character you're playing, yeah. Why you're in that world, that city, whatever. But outside of that, 
if you choose to be a, a, a good person, have a moral system built into it. Yeah. Saints Row, I think, is what filled that kind of niche. Mm. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. here's an open world where you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. That's true. And then you just fall, you know, you, you make your own story. But That's yeah. true. Yeah, no, it sucks. Uh, GTA 6. I'm excited for the game. It's not going to come out for another two or three years, but man, do pe are people harsh and are people like really beating up on a game that's like in alpha? <laughs> it, I would say that's even pre alpha. I mean, there's, yeah, there is, so like, there's a lot of texture. There isn't a lot of high grade yeah. texture, but there's a lot of texture to a lot of stuff. So, and, and animation was in there. There was clearly voice acting that had already been put in place. You know, atmosphere, oh, yeah. it, like, like everybody had, there was little set pieces that were happening. Everybody seemed to, you know, have some sort of, of mind, if you will. Like all the, all the NPC all had a mind an AI, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like an AI. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they were like hiding behind, like there was this, there's a scene where you rob a, your characters rob a, a diner. Mm -hmm. And you have a time limit before the cops get there. And the, the the person playing the game snuck around the cops and stole the cop car. <laughs> <laughs> I think I skipped. I, like, I, saw the cops... the, I saw part of that clip, but I skipped over what led to that. Yeah, because they, they were all rushing the front door. And the late, the female character goes out the side door or around, while everyone's rushing through the front door. goes around, gets into the cop car and steals it. And it's like, oh, oh that's cool. That's awesome. That's that's fun. Yeah. Uh, you could see little little bits of information on the screen that kind of let you know what the characters were doing or possible actions, little mini actions and whatnot. So it it looks very interesting to me. I, I, I two or three years. I mean, whatever. I got something to tide me over for another two or three years. Oh, there's so many games out there. Yeah, so many games. yeah, there really is. Um, I don't know where to go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying how can I get out of that and go and get into something else um, you know what they won't be doing though in GTA 6 what won't they be doing they will it? not be cooking chicken in NyQuil so I, okay <laughs> yeah, the, the long, up, the long pause there was for effect everybody and so everybody understands what I heard or what I said yes well, cooking I chicken don't in NyQuil I understand I mean, some like some the, fucking. Yeah, I guess some, the FD is warning about it, right? Oh yeah, uh, there's some yeah. asshole out there that was probably probably dumped Nyquil in the skillet on accident, thinking it was barbecue sauce or something. Oh God, you know who you know who the culprit is? TikTok again is the is, is the is the culprit of this doesn't, doesn't this new uh, food challenge. Yeah, uh, I, oh, I saw dear. a video of someone actually cooking chicken in a skillet in Nyquil. With Nyquil, I saw that. That's the same video I saw. I think that's the TikTok video that that's been making. Okay. Around. Well, when they were done and put it on a plate, the shit was raw still in the center. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, it know, was like split open, and you could see it wasn't cooked. <laughs> I don't. People are look. Obviously, people are bored and have way, way too much time on their hands because <laughs> this is what we're doing with our with our free time is we're making Nyquil chicken. I just imagine we're doing. imagine trying to clean that shit out of the skillet you put it in as the the alcohol well, base or the water base, whatever the hell NyQuil's made of, then that gets evaporated away and just syrup is left and bleh. Well, do you remember Scissorp? Scissorp? No. What is so that? So Scissorp was a drink from about a decade ago where it was cough syrup and like alcohol. Oh, lean. Well, now is it called lean now? That's that's what syrup? that's what I at have, least a decade ago. Yeah, people were putting cough syrup in like Sprite, codeine, codeine and Sprite. Yeah, but it's not Sprite. I mean, it's alcohol. Oh, it's okay. Sprite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you 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 get drunk and you get the codeine hit at the same time. Hmm. You know, and that was a thing that people did, like for loco. Right, oh, right. Two right. things that go great together, I guess. Alcohol, <laughs> alcohol, alcohol, and tons and of caffeine. caffeine. <laughs> yeah. And two thousand nine, yeah, when it was real good, when you get done with it, and you just got the jitters. 
I think it was, yeah, because I think they outlawed the formula because people I think they were did. dying off of Four Loki. Oh, so, yeah. But anyway. Uh, Look, yeah. The, we have too much time in our hands. That's all I, I know. I just don't, and I don't even, like I said, who who even comes up with that combination? Like I bored just, people. I, the most bored people in the world. Come that, that I've, Francis, I have been pretty fucking bored in my life. Never sure. have I thought about cooking anything in a substance that it was not meant to be cooked in. Uh, well, never have I thought. Think of it this way: if I, well, if I, if I mix my medicine and my food together, I'm killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, but I mean, look at this, right? Like somebody looked at a thing that popped out of a chicken and said, "Oh, I can eat that." And okay, then, fair. Then eggs. Right, like so, people ha ate have been eating weird stuff for generations. <laughs> I mean, you know, chicken and Nyquil. Why not? What makes Dayquil? Though I'm curious, why not Dayquil? Uh, because well, I mean, Dayquil just makes me hyper and horny. Doesn't now make me, doesn't make yeah, me yeah. feel any better. But I'm I'm horny you as hell. What's that? Wow. Hey. Nobody wants that in combination with chicken, I guess. So, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, chicken makes me pretty happy, but not like yeah. that. Mm. Well, look, I guess don't do it. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't follow enough TikTok. I don't watch enough TikTok to know any of this stuff. No, like, no. Yeah. I, 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 I still have a TikTok. I open it sometimes, and I could just go... Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's a lot of, it's still, uh, TikTok is still a lot of thoughts and a lot of people trying to be comedians. So it's like, okay, well, good job, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> there is, there is yeah. a lot of that. There is a lot of that for sure. Yeah. Um, mm. But people do mm. become celebrities off of TikTok. And exactly. I would like, yeah. I would like to let you know, yeah. Francis. That uh, yes. I have become a bit of a celebrity, friend. A TikTok celebrity? Not a TikTok oh, celebrity. Okay. Tell me about it. A local celebrity, if you will. Tell me more. Well, me and the lady friend were at the Gym Mineral and Rock Show again this weekend looking for deals mm -hmm. on rocks. And uh, another $1,000 open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, while while perusing some some rocks and crystals right after walking in, uh, I hear somebody say, "Excuse me," and it was definitely directed towards me. So I like slowly look up. I'm like, "Yes," and the person says, "Uh, you're you're the you're a ninja, the uh, Hawks, Mister Hawks," and I was just like. Yes, that is me. I mean, my father's Mr. Hawks, but uh, yes. And he's just like, what, 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 what's your first name? What do you go by? I was like, oh, Josh, the 303 Ninja. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's it. And got all excited. And I, I just went in because I figured I knew him. I just didn't recognize the person. So I went in and did the, you know, the friendly handshake bro hug thing. And then sure. started talking. And I'm like, wait a second. I don't really know this person. I mean, like, I, I clearly know I've met this person before, but I don't really... You have met this person. I have met the person, but I've I've never been singled out someplace like that. I thought you have at least once before, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't online. Maybe it, was, maybe it was in person, maybe it was online, but I, I thought you'd been singled out before. Not, not like that. I thought like the that. ninja has been recognized in public. Not like that. Not randomly. Okay. It, it may have been in a, at a con or something, but not just at a random event. Okay. okay. But the the person sure. uh, asked me how the podcast was going and whatnot, and I I finally figured out who it was, and it is a local artist that did comic books here oh, and nice. met at a comic oh, con, nice. a, a Denver show here, years ago, mm -hmm. and just you know okay. we've kept up on the on the, uh, on the Facebooks with each other. Uh, but I, it, it was just crazy to one, the, the handle kind of get said, the last name gets said and the podcast get mentioned. 
And I was just like, I was just kind of thrown back. I'm like, oh shit, this is this is kind of fun. This is cool. Well, I don't have anything else. I don't really have any. I don't have an ending for that story, but you know. Well, the ending is is that you got to meet. I mean, I you know, essentially they're a fan. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, that's how I took en- it. Enough to know you by by username. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's pretty cool. Like, that's not something everyone can say. No, not I've either. never been recognized for anything. So, <laughs> uh, I was no one, no one recognized. Yeah. I, I was at a Seattle show uh, with uh, my buddy Smurf, and a lady. While well, yes. we were in the merch line, oh, yes. uh, while waiting in the merch line, a lady walked up to Smurf. I was like, I should know you from somewhere, huh? You've been on TV, haven't you? And Smurf immediately was just like, played it up. He's just like, I don't know, maybe you have. And I I was like, I'll play along too. I'll be like the handler guy, you know? And uh, for like 10 minutes. Please tell me they got the wrong person. (laughs) For 10 minutes, this girl thought she, he was somebody else. And asked for, asked for a picture. And he was like, no. <laughs> so it was our turn for <laughs> it was our turn for merch. So I'm like, all right, it's our turn. We can go this way. And as we're walking to the merch line, I'm like, you're a dick, because <laughs> that girl is <laughs> that girl's gonna go home and cry, because one, she thought she was talking to a celebrity, and you treated her like an asshole. Or two, she's gonna go home. Look at the picture she just snuck, of t- uh, just took and snuck away. Look at look you up right. thinking she thought you were this person that she looked up, realize it's not that person, and she's gonna cry because she just embarrassed herself instead of some random person. Who do you, who did she look? I, I, I have no I, idea. I know him and I don't know anyone he looks like. I have no idea. Like, I'm trying to think of like who does this guy look like? Man, I, I kinda wish I knew. I kinda wish he said a name or something. Yeah, I, I it, yeah, I have no idea. And he was just playing it up, just playing it up. Like, yeah, maybe you have. Should I know you? I don't know. Maybe. Well, that's where you need to. I hope someone at some point will like think you're, you know, look at you and be like, I know you from somewhere. That'd yeah, you know so- from Twitch. Yeah. The, the, the gears. I'm a celebrity there. And maybe you've maybe you've called that that one place I did a voiceover for, and you heard my. My voice is the the voice of their phone system. <laughs> or the, yes, that's it. Or the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yes, that's all of those things. Hey, um, Francis, did you know, kind of maybe, what, 45 minutes of an hour away from you, there is a restaurant, the first of its kind, that's apparently gone through two or three name changes since I looked at the uh, article an hour ago. Uh, is the first cannabis cafe where you can consume finally in a place that is not your home. Yes, there's a couple of uh, interesting uh, developments when it comes to cannabis lounges, I guess they're called. Mm-hmm. I guess they're just places where you can eat. It's kind of, we're turning into Amsterdam pretty much. Sure. That's really what this is. Right, Amsterdam is coffee and weed. Now you have like a cafe where you can have a drink, and you can have your edible. Or I, I'm pretty sure you could probably smoke in there too. I mean, it's probably yes. a place like cigar lounges you can smoke in there. Yeah, so they they have a bong service as opposed to a bottle service. Bong service, okay. Right. Where they deliver the bongs. The bong service, yeah. They deliver bongs to your table on a platter. Uh, the article, well, the, the article that I that I was reading anyway said that their their weed selection read like a wine list and was fourteen pages. Ooh, uh, well, all right. And it had quotes such as like energetic and fruity or earthy and God. sedative. Oh, yeah, yeah. no joke, uh, no joke. Yeah, we have a, but the, the, here's the thing, and the names of these places you would never be able to tell, right? Except for the Cannabis Cafe because it's in the name. But there's or the, the artist, or the original, artist. the original Cannabis Cafe. 
Yeah, it's like okay, well at least we know what we're at least you know what you're getting, right? Like it tells you right on on the label. Oh, this sure. Is what you're getting. But here's the artist tree. Apparently, that's another place that you can do um, that stuff. There's Aeon Botanica, which I guess kind of has that weird name, but that's yeah. a tea, food, and massage. Okay. You get a massage as well with your weed. Um, the Woods, which I guess is pretty self I don't know, is it, I don't know if it's self-explanatory, but at least it's... Yeah. Oh, Woods. Oh, I get it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, mm. oh, weed, Woods. Okay, yeah. You have some trees. That's good. And, you think, and apparently Jay-Z opened up a, or bought a company called Colma, which will be, um, I guess, turning into something similar. So good on you, Jay-Z. Yeah, he's got yeah, to do mean, something with all that money. Have you looked at the menu? Is there something you want to try? Is there something you want to eat? Uh, no, I didn't look at the weed selection menu or the food selection menu. I just saw the article and thought it was really cool that the, finally the, you know, if there's one, there'll be more than that. And the more stuff that happens in California, the more it'll leak here or to Seattle next, you know, or some other, I'm, you know, pro open weed state. I mean, look at how you guys got an in and out. I mean, come on. True. Like you, you guys are, are taking uh, California supplant, you know, yeah. plants. From, uh, on, on the same yeah. time, though, look at, look at you know, uh, White Castle. They just skipped right over Colorado and went to Vegas. That's true, but it's not in California, so. That's true, too. It's, you know, they're not a government. Like, Vegas is very, like, Vegas is supposed to be the place where you can find kind of the weird and rare, right? Like, stuff that you're not going to find anywhere else. That's fair. That's fair. It happens to be. Yeah, it just happens to be a White Castle. So right. There you go. Get your sliders. Uh, well, that was the plan for the birthday week, but that didn't happen. Some some other time. Some other time. Sure. It's They're not going anywhere. No. They're going to be on the strip and in at Fremont for quite some time. In they're, my they're belly right at some time. point. And in your belly at some point. You could have <laughs> gone to the Heart Attack Grill. Uh, yourself. Could have. Could have gone, gone to that food, place where they just talk shit to you. Oh yeah. Um. Oh God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do I forget? Oh, oh, uh, Dave or Dave's Last Resort or something like that or something. Dave, it's Dave, something Dave, goofy whatever. like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. I don't think I could like be talk shit to and and enjoy myself at a, at a restaurant. I mean, I I'm a fan of gimmicky cafes and restaurants and stuff like um. Like Bubba Gump's, he's kind of gimmicky hmm. in the sense of like you had the sign, right? Never or been there. Force run if you want. Okay, so at, at yeah, at, at, at Bubba Gump's, it's just a seafood restaurant sort right. of. Yeah. And the only way to get uh, the attention of a of wait staff is you have a sign that sits on your table, and if it says run for us, run, they leave you alone. But then if you turn the sign over, it says stop for a stop, and they'll stop for your table, and hmm. they'll you know give you whatever you want or whatever. So that's like their one gimmick. Um, there used to be a place called Bob and McGee's where people were dressed up as different um, uh, fairy tale characters and they acted like them too. Mm. So they would be like serving you as Cinderella. So they'd be like, oh, my, you know, they'd be in character oh, while serving shit. food. And it's always, it was, yeah. So I mean, if they were like was, a Jackrabbit yeah, Slims, that'd be sweet. I mean, they're probably, maybe, maybe. I mean, they've only, you know, it, it, it that was a deep cut. Went away cut. for a very long time ago. That was but, a deep yeah. cut. That was a deep like, cut. Um, yeah. There was a Nike. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Uh, um, Pulp Fiction. The restaurant oh. they go to with the, with the cars and all the, the movie people and TV people. Jerry Lewis. Right. <laughs> you were saying? Uh, I don't know. Um, oh. Stuff. We, I don't know what we're... I don't well, know what the hell we're... Good. I don't know what we're in the, the the thing we're using. The software here keeps beeping in my ear to let me know how shitty my internet is. So, you know, things are. Oh, really? It tells you like it. Oh yeah, it stuff? lets me know exactly what's happening to the to the actual stream, and it just it, my blood is just you know boiling. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean. There, no, there's there's the, at mean, least no, the no. audio's here, and that's all that's important, really. Sure. I've seen this. I've seen. I've seen it afterward, and it works. I've watched it. It's there. 
but I don't know how yeah, it looks as it's surprised. going out. Well, but, I mean, you upload it to YouTube, so. Yeah, it's there. Um, well, let me be sure I got everything. Yeah, so, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to get some some weed cafes out here because that would be pretty cool. There was, there's been a few weed-friendly bars where they have, like, a patio on the back, and you can go smoke weed on the patio, but you couldn't do anything inside. And and there's a THC-infused alcohol. So, like, you know, there is some, but there's not really like any of that. There isn't, that wouldn't be sold at any bars here, the, the way the oh. laws are written. Oh. Like, you can, you can do it as a promotional thing, but you can't, alcohol and weed can't be sold in the same place. So, technically, oh, that I think you could do it here. I'm pretty sure you could do it in California because mm. I rem- they were selling beer with it infused. Hmm. forever and i'm pretty sure they're still selling it now and i could i be i mean i'm not the be all when it comes to the fucking weed laws but this i've had i've had for the go ahead no no, go ahead yeah i've had cbd infused beer uh but that was at a Uh, beer fest so i mean it's kind of it was a one-off sort of thing they weren't selling anything when are you going to have your cannabis strip clubs is all I want to know. That would be, I mean, that would progressively be next. <laughs> or <laughs> down the so. line, you know. Yeah. I mean, it happens anyway. It just happens in the dressing rooms. Oh, I was going to say. Oh, I, dude, I, I'll, a lot yeah, of strippers. No, that, that's that's not all that gets consumed in the fucking dressing rooms, but, you know. They, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, go, what were you going to say? Uh, nothing. Uh, I thought so you were going to think. Nail is long for a reason. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, yeah. so I made, I made Francis watch some wrestling stuff this past week. Yeah. And yeah, not uh, even real, re- not even actual wrestling either. It right. It was stuff that happens after a match. And, and we'll probably lose everybody else that's that's been watching. So, I mean, if you're not even interesting halfway into wrestling stuff, you could probably just turn off the thing now and come back next week. I just, I really, you, I, I mean, you need so desperately of a wrestling podcast because you love wrestling so very much. Like, you just love wrestling. Well, I'm trying to get you to love it as well, at least <laughs> aspects of it. And um, It's interesting, yeah. It is interesting at the very least. Um, recently, uh, All Elite Wrestling put on uh, one of their quarterly pay-per-views uh, called All Out. And after the pay-per-views, um, the the owner of the company likes to do a media scrum afterward and bring in uh, the wrestlers and have them sit in front of... <laughs> the uh, media press or the wrestling press call, you know if there if there's such a thing i guess there is a thing yeah wrestling press yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they um, exist <laughs> so they get to ask the wrestlers questions and it's it, it usually these media scrums in the past have been kind of open and not so much in kayfabe so not so much in storyline they're kind of free form guys can say kind of what they've wanted to and uh, I made Francis watch, in particular, uh, a guy named CM Punk watch his portion of the media scrum. Uh, because it was very fiery, and as things developed over the, the course of the rest of the weekend and that next following week, this is like three-week-old news, basically. But I wanted things to kind of develop, so I had something no. to chew on. Well, I wanted no. something to chew on, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, the, in the media scrum, uh, CM Punk goes off on a whole bunch of people. And the most important things that were in there was him going off on one wrestler in particular and Mm. the EVPs of the company who are also wrestlers, active wrestlers. And one of 
uh, and then another wrestler who the EVPs and this other wrestler are in a group, a stable, if you will, called the Elite. It's partly where all Elite Wrestling's name comes from. This is all important stuff. Mm. So CM Punk goes off on a whole bunch of people, dropping bombs, verbally eviscerating people, uh, and their mothers. <laughs> in 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 yes, one well, case, well, yeah, because. They share bank accounts. So. They, cause they share a bank account. Um, there were a couple of fun quotes. I'm going to try to find one right now. Um, well, he started off that whole thing by like, like getting mad at the press, which was interesting. Well, and some there was I, I, I didn't give Francis any kind of context. I said, here, here's the link. Watch this. Uh, yeah, yeah, essentially. And the the wrestling press for the last few years anyway has been either fed information or been putting they not have not speculative they have been putting out information um yeah. rumors you know printing rumors basically of of what CM Punk has done to this person or that person or or use his his sway in wrestling to get somebody fired or what have you and I think he just kind of had enough and had a, had a, had a platform and was ready to stand on the apple crate and soap, the soap box, whatever, whatever the, yeah, mm -hmm. apple crate. I like that more. Um, and, and just go off and there were people while it was happening on Twitter, like, is this a work or a shoot? And I'm like, no, this is, this is a total, this is a total shoot. Cause the owner of the company, Tony Khan, is sitting right next to him and just looks dumbfounded the entire time. Like, he, I, I think at some points he wanted to step in and actually, like, cut CM Punk off, but just didn't know what to do. Yeah. You see you see him kind of, like, twitch a little bit. Like, yeah. Like, you know, when he, when, if he ever decides to blink because his eyes are just, like, so wide. <laughs> That's so like, awesome that that's something you notice because... That is something that gets talked about a lot. The guy doesn't blink. <laughs> um, there was uh, yeah, yeah. there was an a interview between uh, a guy named Hangman Adam Page and CM Punk. And up until that point, Adam Page had been presented as a babyface, a good guy. And he gets to the end of the ring with CM Punk to cut this promo before a pay-per-view. And the whole promo was just a heel, bad guy promo. And it was a lot of people in the wrestling community and the, the Twitter verse and everything were like, what the hell was that? Like, <laughs> so confused by it. And it was live. And it was, as they say in the wrestling business, uh, Paige went into business for himself. Went off the quote unquote script. And just cut his own promo so during this media scrum at one point CM Punk asked the, the wrestling press uh, just rhetorical question almost but what did I ever do in this world to get to what did I ever do in this world to get to deserve an empty headed fucking dumb fuck like hangman Adam Page to go out <laughs> on national television and fucking go into business for himself for what yeah what did I ever do? And is that, I mean, that's just the, like, when he said, what, what's the, what was it? Empty headed fucking dumb fuck. Empty headed fucking dumb fuck. Yeah, uh, Tony yeah, Khan's yeah. face was yeah. just like, oh my God. <laughs> well, he, I feel, yeah, like I feel a lot of this stuff he was taking kind of personally. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like the whole time he was just like, he's, he also mentioned that he's trying to like run a business, mm -hmm. like he's trying to run his own business, right? Like, it, cause he's a brand, right? Like mm -hmm. this dude's a brand. And so he's like, I'm trying to run my own brand here. I'm trying to do this thing. And, and it's, you know, 
you, yeah, like I don't know how those normally go. I don't know how these these little uh, media scrums normally go because I this is my first one ever watching, mm-hmm. you know. And this guy, you know, CM Punk is taking it very seriously while eating pastries and drinking <laughs> uh, <laughs> from from Mindy's from Mindy's Bakery. From Mindy's Bakery, got to get the got to get the um, plug in there, you know. Well, it's just amazing, right? Like he's just chewing on some some brownies and like coffee cake the entire time, and it's really kind of funny because it's very, you know, it's very casual. He's mm-hmm. all, you know, he's just like this this. He's covered in blood and sweat, and mm-hmm. he's just sitting there in his little short shorts and whatever. And he's having this conversation, and he kind of he just starts it really angry, right? Like mm-hmm. he just kind of goes into it already upset and he's already pointing fingers at the press and and people are like oh no i'm a good like i'm a nice guy like i'm cool like the press mm-hmm. are just kind of like fighting back a little bit and you know and he, he goes off and then as as josh was saying i came into this blind so he's just talking about random people i've never heard of before and like his kind of beef with all of these people like he starts naming people and calling him out which I'm assuming this stuff is, I don't know if it's recorded or live. That was all live. Um, that was taking place at okay. my, my my time at like one in the morning, live on YouTube. Yes. So like, you know, people are watching this. It's unscripted from as far as I can tell. And yeah, the, the, oh, the Tony owner guy looking like he fell out of a tree and like <laughs> landed you know, landed on a butt plug or something. He just got wide eyed the entire time. Just like, oh man, what just happened? Oh, that's fucking you amazing. Know? And it's just, oh, it's so funny. It's, it's, it's well, because this is my first experience watching this type of thing. So I had no idea what to expect. And it's about almost half an hour long mm-hmm. where he goes through his grievances back to back to back. And sometimes Tony gets a question. And then CM Punk will interrupt him and be like, "Hold on, I got this." Yeah, <laughs> like, like at one point he does say he'll badmouth somebody else. Yeah. It, it, Tony Khan does say at one point like it's it's I, I'm trying to make a point that yada yada yada, and CM Punk just interrupts him. And he goes, "It's not his place to make a fucking point," <laughs> you know, or whatever. Yeah. It was it was it. I I kind of wish I didn't pay for the pay per view and just tuned in to the media scrum because the media scrum was almost better than the fifty dollar pay per view. Um, oh wow, fifty buck! It wow. was it was also five hours long, so I mean, you get your money's worth. Okay. Um, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at one point he attacks the executive vice presidents of the company, who are also wrestlers who were uh, on the indie on the indie scene. Made a big wave on the indie scene. They're out of Reseda, California. Um, a lot of the first generation AEW stars or wrestlers all were part of the the elites group of friends. A lot of these guys came from their yeah. own wrestling organization or ones that they were affiliated sure. with. Um, so at one point, CM Punk does go after them saying... There's people out there that call themselves EVPs uh, that should have fucking known better in reference to uh, one of the uh, another wrestler that he was going off on. Uh, they should have fucking known better. This shit is none of their business. I understand sticking up for your fucking friends. I, I get it. I stuck up for that guy. Speaking of the wrestler that he was eviscerating earlier. Uh, I paid his bills until I didn't. Yeah, let me go down here. Um uh, it's a disgrace to this industry. It's a disgrace to this company. Now we're far beyond apologize, uh, apologies. I gave him a chance. It wasn't handled. And you saw what I had to do, which is very regrettable. Lowering, my, lowering myself to his level. But that's where we are right now. Um, that's not the quote I wanted, but it's just crazy how he just kept going and going and going. Um, attacking the EVPs. Well- verbally like that uh, there there was one point where he does say like you're going after an, it you're stepping on your own dick by putting your top guy in the company in the middle of the card being the wrestling you know who's wrestling that night 
uh, when they looked at all the ratings and the pay and the buy-ins of everything, CM Punk is their star. They have a few stars for sure, but CM Punk is their okay. money driving, ask, their like... money driving star. And on a pay-per-view, they put him in the middle of the show. And so they can have their kind of wrestling at the, you know, for their niche company or their niche audience. And he did say, you're stepping on your own dick by doing that. So he just, and he eviscerated uh, the yeah. executive vice presidents. Go ahead. No, that's what I was, yeah. I mean, because he seems like a big deal, you know, at, at overall. Like, yeah, he, seems he was like one of the biggest. Definitely one of the biggest wrestling stars ever. Uh, he was a big deal in the WWE and did a something similar to this, but did it on national television, unlike Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Uh, it's you can look mm -hmm. that up if you want to. It's called uh, the Pipe Bomb, and where he oh. he just sits on the ramp and just goes off on the entire company, and it's apparently a, a total shoot. And they cut his microphone off at one point. Uh, you're right. What was the other term? A shoot or what? A shoot or a work. Yeah. They're old. So they're old. Terms, so they're, they're old carny terms, from what I understand. But wrestling mm -hmm. adopted them and never really let them go. Um, mm -hmm. A a work is is <laughs> a work is what the people that were facing fat um, uh, Aikido guy. And jumping around and doing flips. Mm. Right? That's a work. Okay. They're working together to to put on a display. Mm. A shoot would be like, fuck what we talked about doing backstage. I'm gonna come out and punch you in the face. They don't you don't mm. talk about it, you just do it. They're right. so they're rare, rarely is one's unscripted. Um, go ahead, what? Unscripted one's unscripted. You can. That's one way to look at it as well. Yes, one's in kayfabe, okay. one is not. Um, so this whole thing was just a shoot. He was just shooting from the hip, and so his. So this is the part Francis doesn't know about yet. So he finishes his yeah, twenty yeah, yeah. twenty five minute rant about everything that he, that's been bothering him for the last fourteen years, apparently, and he goes yeah. back to his dressing room with his trainer named Ace Steel, which I think is one of the greatest names in wrestling ever. That can't be his real name, but it is a, that is fucking, that is an amazing name. And his... Yeah, like his brother, Max Powell. Know, exactly, you know. exactly. So they go back, they have a, a private dressing room, so they go back there to shower. Apparently he broke or separated his shoulder. He, he had some sort of arm injury. If you look at the, go back and watch that media scrum he's hanging his left arm pretty pretty heavily so a bicep shoulder clavicle something like that um too busy watching him eat i'm sorry too busy watching him eat yeah um so after the interview or the scrum he goes back to his interview with ace apparently the evps um the head of talent relations a bodyguard, the second in command of AEW, and I believe a couple other people, uh, a producer, one producer, all went oh. apparently to CM Punk's office or uh, dressing room office, whatever the fuck. Here's where the reports get muddy. One half Ooh. of the camp says uh, that the... Uh, their brothers, Nick and Matt Jackson, they are known, they're, they're a tag team because they're brothers, known as the Young Bucks. So just to, oh, sure. just to tighten some of this stuff up, the Young Bucks apparently kicked uh, the door down. This is what one camp is saying. And it's funny because there's a move they do called a super kick. So everybody on the internet was like, did they kick the door down? Or did they super kick the door down? As long as I get to roll my eyes at it. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's one half of the camp. The other half of the camp is saying that they were banging on the door repeatedly and finally forced their way in past somebody. So there's 
conflicting oh, stories. Um, but a fight, right. a full on fight broke out in which CM Punk, nobody has denied that CM Punk threw the first punch and punched one of the young bucks in the eyeball. Uh, in the eyeball. Okay. Yes. Uh, after, after, uh, while I'm telling you this, can you look up the definition of a melee for me? So a melee, as it's been um, uh, reported, ensued, where CM Punk punched a dude in the face. Fight. A confused fight, skirmish, or scuffle. Okay, that sounds that sounds kind of like the Young Bucks wrestling. Um, so that fits. Okay. <laughs> so uh, one of the Young Bucks gets punched in the face. Uh, apparently, Ace Steel, or somebody threw a chair and hit one of the other bucks in the face with the chair. So we have both young bucks have been hit in the face with something. Um, okay. The reports are coming out that one of the other EVPs, Kenny Omega, tried to rescue CM Punk's dog from the room from getting trampled. And... Apparently, Ace Steele's wife, which I imagine her name is like, I don't know, Carbon Fiber. Um. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I hope so. I hope, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, uh, I don't know. The scuffle got close to her, and Ace Steele became an animal and apparently bit Kenny Omega and pulled his hair. Also, Any chunks. From I don't. Their body I, as, that is body. unknown as of this as as of this point. Uh, apparently, also in this the scuffle was the head of uh, re- talent relations, Christopher Christopher Daniels, producer Pat Buck, uh, a guy named Michael Nakazawa, which, from what I understand, is a Kenny Omega's bodyguard or uh, trainer but he's also a wrestler um, and a guy named Brandon Cutler. CM Punk and a steel have yet to been announced as suspended. A steel apparently has been taken off the road and sent home and CM Punk, regardless of what happened here was going to uh, be gone for injury recovery anyway, because he had to get surgery. Now, everybody that I just mentioned, minus Ace Steel and CM Punk, have been suspended and or stripped of their wrestling titles. That night, CM Punk won their main championship belt. Uh, Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, and Kenny Omega won the debuting triple or what do they call it, trios tag team match or tag team champions first time these he carried a big belt yeah he was carrying a belt with them so yeah. first time champions they were champions for 24 hours and they got stripped of the of the belts the next following okay. tv they put new belts on on a new trios team and have started a tournament for the world title but no mention of the elite no mention of cm punk uh, all all of those people have been taken out of the video intro of the show. Uh, the Elite have a YouTube channel. It has also been put on indefinite uh, hiatus. Um, Christopher Daniels, Pat Buck, and Brandon Cutler, since this has all happened, has been removed from suspension. So they're oh. back. They're back. You know, with they're the, in. They're back in, but Brandon Cutler is like best friends with Nick, Nick and Matt Jackson, like in real life. So I don't imagine he'll be actually on the road. And Nakazawa, I mean, like I said, if he is the bodyguard or trainer of Omega, he's not going to be around. Excuse me, unless Omega is around. So there is an internal investigation happening. And until that investigation is complete, everybody else is on suspension indefinitely. 
from what reports wow. are at this point. This is why I wanted to wait a couple weeks or there's something to chew on and something to actually talk about that is definitely happening. Um, and then my big rhetorical question, because Francis can't answer it, is does all elite wrestling need the elite? And my answer is they fucking don't need them. They can, they're doing okay. just fine without them. The show's actually been better without the elite running the show. So that's the lesson learned then is that they don't need a certain type. I or think, they don't need I, I don't think they need them, but I, and I, I, it's very interesting to see what they're going to do because, like I said, CM Punk is their top draw. So do you, do you fire your top draw? I don't know. I don't know. But no. can you can you let what he did go unpunished at the same time? I don't know. What 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 is what he did punishable? Like what do you which part? Like the, the Well, I mean like with within within, within the, the carny world of wrestling, I'm sure something was is punishable within there. Um as far as legality of things. There's no legality of things. The only thing that that's legally pending is punches, bites, and chair throwing. So, in other words, did they did CM Punk become did, did he not follow decorum and like etiquette for wrestling? I suppose. I yeah. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of an analogy. If you were if we were all hanging out with all of our con friends sure and you got word that one of our fucking close con friends podcast brothers or sisters was talking mad shit about us right over there like you're probably yeah. going to go and investigate go like what the fuck I mean, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to know what's going on. Yeah. I'd like to know what's being said and why, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by bringing the number two person who is the, their lead legal person, their, like, lead lawyer or whatever, I believe, I'm trying, and I try to look at things, you know, because I wasn't fucking there, but as with all the information that's been out there, I look at, okay, by grabbing the talent, the head of talent relations, and the head legal person at least you're attempting on the surface when you look at it you're you're like oh i'm going about this the right way but the problem is right. when the head of talent relations is also part of your group of friends yeah you know and i don't know i just i i i could see it from the other side of the door that got super kicked in until until the truth comes out let's just go with that uh, I, I could be like, you're not fucking coming in here. Get the fuck out. Punch a motherfucker in their mouth. Yeah. The chair throwing is a bit extreme, yeah. but like, you know, I've been known to grab a chair before, but I've never tossed a motherfucker before. Uh, I, I guess what surprises me the most is just how immediate and intense the reaction was. What I should have had you done was watch a couple minutes of the next next group of guys that came up because there's a shot of one of the security guards that's you can't see them. They're off frame, but you see a guy run through the frame with his phone. It's, it's on and he's looking down at it and he is running to go what everybody thinks. It's all speculative. But everybody thinks that they were, the security guard was running to the melee that was happening. The interesting part, I, uh, yeah. the elite have this YouTube show, and Brandon Cutler is the one that films almost all of it. Okay. I I'm like, okay. I want to know, I want to see that footage because you know he has some of it. Oh yeah, oh totally. Wow. Yeah. I, I, there's a leak. There's a leak the I'd love to see. <laughs> I was going to say, I was under the impression that a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, a lot of the back door stuff <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> was being 
recorded to some degree because it makes good B footage, and mm. it was something that happened a lot during like '80s and '90s wrestling, where you would see scripted stuff, though, mm. as mm-hmm. as it was, but you'd see stuff happening behind the scenes. You'd see stuff happening in the corridors of wherever the place is, you know, holding the match. So, in my own head, it makes logical sense for everything that goes on, including this big fight with the chair throwing and everything, that someone got on a camera because everyone has a camera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has a way of recording. So I'm a little surprised that, yeah, you're right, the leak of this brawl, of right. this melee. The melee. It's a, yeah, that the was melee. the word that was used. So let's, so let's not... Let's not, let's not uh, yeah. Got to use the proper terminology. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I didn't know what a melee was, so I'm glad. I'm glad I had you look it up. But the the melee happened, and someone in the background, an intern or like an assistant, has their phone out, mm-hmm. their phone out, and they're going, "Gotta get this all." Like, yeah, you know. That's 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 some footage. That's a leak. I'd love to see. That would be awesome. Uh, it, but yeah, it might. Uh, yeah, it might hurt AEW overall, though, as a result. Uh, I mean, that that's what a lot of people are kind of asking right now. Again, with yeah. the, there's there's really two camps when it comes to to all elite wrestling, AEW. There's a lot of these indie type wrestlers that came in from the indies that got signed, and they were you know, it was it was new and exciting and interesting. And then there's guys that were are more traditional professional wrestlers. And I think now that the company is like three years old and they have bigger names, just names, not necessarily people that have been doing it for, well, almost all the names they have are veterans, but they have big name oh. talent now. And so yeah. a lot of, I think, I think the elite, I personally think the elites and their group of friends are all kind of, feeling out of place now because they're not the center of attention anymore. Not to say that they're, they're egotistical or anything like that, but like, like the, like the comment of, of putting your biggest main draw in the middle of the show, as opposed to at the top of the show or the, the main card, the, the, the main event, yeah. you're kind of stepping on your own dick. Yeah. And look, um, it is, Essentially, what wrestling is, is part of it is the dick measuring. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, like, as much as, you know, with any type of entertainment, especially competitive entertainment like that, which is really unique in itself, um, people are going to constantly try to fight for that coveted spot where mm-hmm. they get the most attention because with that comes sponsorship, money, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Even though I don't know if wrestlers get sponsored, but I'm assuming they do. I'm sure there's I'm there's they... some sort of sponsorship out there. Yeah, sure. They're like, yeah, I, I'm selling Adidas pads, right? Knee pads for when I decide to, you know, drop kick somebody. They're right. Like, I have the right knee pad support for that. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I'm certain there's that. But if there's something that that scrum outside of what happened afterwards has taught me is that uh, people take, you know, people are in wrestling, take it very seriously. (laughs) I mean, it's a serious thing. Yeah, I mean, real people, real consequences and real problems. CM Punk, when he did in his rant before the end of the thing, he's just he did say, you know, j- just keep in mind about everything that you do report because at the end of the day, we're all humans and we all have feelings. Yeah. And so. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Like he, in the end, you know, everyone is getting scared of him and like people were asking questions and, you know, it's like, oh, I like you. Oh, you know. And he'd apologize to some of them. And he's mm-hmm. like, no, you always treat me great, punk. Like, it's great. Yeah. Mm. You know. And then at the very end, right, he's about to leave, he's like, you know, despite everything, I'm a nice guy. Okay, like, <laughs> right. I'm a cool, like, I'm a nice dude. Don't worry about it, fellas. Who I've been yelling at this entire time. Right, right. Don't worry about it. Like I said, I, I, I don't know exactly how interesting that actually is to, to the common ear, but 
uh, just anytime anytime something goes off of the the let's use the term script of any genre i don't care what it is i love that you know yeah. when 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 I you're mean, watching when you're watching something doesn't matter what and they cut to the color person and the guys go uh, fuck i don't know you know <laughs> They're like, oh shit, <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that. Oh, I just said shit. Oh, and then all chaos breaks loose. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you, do you remember the time that they had high school referees in the NFL game? Do you remember that? <laughs> Barely. Okay. Yeah. I don't watch football, but I heard that that was going to be a yeah. thing. So I was like, oh, I'm tuning into that. I'll, I'll waste three hours of my life to watch fucking high school referees try to, to, to ref a professional game that'll be amazing uh, yeah and uh, if, if i recall yeah i mean look chaos will ensue as a result the mm-hmm. melee will happen the melee um, yes but yeah i think you know to the average person like if you didn't tell me I, again i don't know what to expect and not having kind of witnessed a lot of a lot of these things so when i'm watching this thing I didn't know there was any other way it could be, right? Like, I didn't know this this whole kind of interaction with press and, and, and what ensued afterwards now. Like, in my own head, it's like, like well, it does it, is it different usually? Like, is it normally? And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, should have had you, like? I should have had you watch part of the next, the next group that went up because that one, they really blurred the lines between kayfabe and reality. Where like it, 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 was, it was right on the border. Like, are they are they are they being their people? Are they being their characters? Are they they being the people they actually are right now? Like, it's it. right. and then watching the security guard go try and break up a fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just found the whole thing just very interesting, and it, it just. Like I said, sometimes I do, I guess you're right. Sometimes I do like watching the bur- world burn and, uh, I mean, in chaos and soon yeah. because it's kind of fun sometimes, especially when I mean, you're not involved. The world in it. wasn't like, luckily though. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but like this was in itself an isolated incident, I guess. Right. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it's something you don't, I guess I'm assuming based off what you've been telling me is like, it's not something you normally see. So no, no. Um, good on them, I guess for keep, at least being honest. And even though the fight wasn't choreographed or anything, <laughs> at least they knew to incorporate chairs, maybe not tables or ladders, but chairs God, involved, nice so reference. At least they got some good reference. <laughs> you don't even know. You realize you made a wrestling reference by using those three objects. No, I will not. I do. Re- I do recall okay. TLC. Okay. Right? Okay. Was, yeah. You know, so that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I retain some, very little, but I retain some wrestling knowledge mm. on occasion. Well, we'll keep feeding it to you. Uh, hopefully, right. like I said at the in, at the beginning of these shows, hopefully it's another interesting episode. Um, like I said, I found it interesting, but I'm a wrestling fan. If you weren't, and this was boring. Mm. Oh, well, sorry. Um, what else is going yeah. on in your life, Francis? You did mention something that I don't think I wrote down. And I've already put my book away. So. Oh, I, I don't remember for now. Like, oh, right. oh, the only other thing I want, the only thing I was going to mention very briefly, which is both sad but also kind of funny, is uh, G4 TV last year started, and now mm-hmm. G4 TV is slowly falling apart and dissolving. And one of the um, one of the victims to it was a person who kind of made a name for herself on G4 by the name of Frosk. I don't know if you remember if you know who this person is, but she uh, did um, X Play with Adam Sessler. Okay, I didn't uh, think I watched current. the new X Play. I was more of a Attack of the Show guy. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I I didn't watch any of it. All I know is that for. Uh, uh, what made the rounds about a year ago or maybe about seven or eight months ago was her on a rant about kind of like sexual harassment and like how 
um, she's not a sexual object and she's not there for the, the, the whims and pleasures of men and whatever, you know, and there was a lot of uncomfortableness from some and Adam just clapping like a seal at everything. Um, hmm. No offense to Adam, I like him. But, <laughs> like, he was just really weird. Um, and a year later, they're like, well, profits are down, you know, uh, we're not getting the same traction because there, we now have a million forms of entertainment now. So G4 is just the one that's just, it's hard to compete, mm -hmm. you know, because it's no, it's not a channel that really anyone cares about. Cause you can get that stuff that they give there anywhere else. And sometimes you can get better versions of it mm -hmm. elsewhere. So they did a bunch of layoffs last week and Frost who did the rant was put up a very insensitive meme saying I survived while all of our colleagues got fired and people were very upset about that they're like your colleagues just got fired mm. like they just got let go well that was like three or four days ago today she got let go oh, <laughs> shit. I find it very funny that it, was, it felt very karma as she um, you know uh, unceremoniously just said haha kind of I mean, I understood why she did it because she's like, I have a bunch of haters and this is kind of to show all the haters that I survived. Right. And yet she, she didn't because, again, w her way with that with that rant er earlier in the year and then this proves that she's controversial and detrimental to the company. And mm. therefore I feel they fired her, which is very interesting and to me kind of just kind of funny because it's like I don't follow any of it. I don't care because I don't much g4 anymore but and i do feel bad for everyone who lost their job because sure. it's an out in la which means that there's a bunch of people in la who are now jobless which sure. sucks yeah um so and uh you know i'm certain it was fun and good for a lot of people just wasn't for me hmm. but yeah it just sucks and but at the same time i do like to see karma every once in a while when I don't again. I don't really know too much about this person, but I knew people were upset with the, with this person for kind of uh, being insensitive to her colleagues, and I just kind of find that funny, in general. But um, look, if you're a G four fan, good on you. But boy, oh boy, are there so many better places to get your <laughs> gaming news and entertainment? Well, and I, I think like, it, it's, it's just, just for me anyway. Attack of the Show really went to more of their. If you remember the old format where they would do around the net. And kind of their little yeah. skit things. That's what they're kind of sticking with as opposed to trying to give you the newest, you know, tech news or what have you. They're kind of, they play games and they just try to make it more of a, a fun variety kind of thing as opposed to let's make this a, a tech show. Yeah, but I mean, even that has already been done better by Twitch streamers. Sure. Right? Like that stuff already exists since then like the a lot of people got an inspiration and be, became popular and became a thing because of them right mm -hmm. they, they they were inspired by attack of the show and all of that stuff and therefore did those things but now they're the stars like these randos who aren't names they're the stars now right and it kind of sucks for people who are trying to make a thing out of g4 but it's like that's not the future it's podcasting it's, it's streaming it's, it's streaming YouTube. yeah like, it's reels yeah yeah, it's reels. It's uh, TikTok. The, it's the, the picture. All, all these... the, what I read the other day, the picture is dead. It's all about shorts and reels now. It is. You, yeah, YouTube Shorts are very popular. They. I like, just saw a thing. YouTube YouTube, YouTube Shorts as of today can start to be monetized. Thank goodness, because a lot of people watch Shorts over videos because it's thirty seconds of a video versus spending ten minutes watching something, mm -hmm. which. I prefer I prefer the longer form, I which I can't believe I'm saying ten minutes long form. Oh right. Well, I I av <laughs> I typically avoid any videos that are about ten minutes long, like ten oh one, ten oh five. I'm like, okay, so there's fucking eight minutes of fluff in here and two minutes of actual information. You're just going for the monetization, you asshole. Look, I've given in. I watch. I've I think the longest live stream. After, I don't even watch it live. I watch it after the fact, and it's usually about three to four hours long. And I've watched all three to four hours of a, of a previous live stream because I'm curious. Mm. And I'll watch it. I mean, I won't watch like 100%. I'll do other things while I'm watching it. But like, 
that's my background noise or that's like what's on my monitors while I'm doing something else mm-hmm. is a three hour stream of somebody talking or doing something <laughs> like that's that's what's considered an I mean if, it, if and, it's like you know scammer payback or something like that that would be kind of fun but no but it's just people talking like yeah. it's just it's kind of sad it's just people talking yeah. people nothing sad about that. but that's, that's what that's what we're doing that's just nothing sad about that yeah no, but, we did it for an hour and a half. Like, yeah, hour and a half. That's the future. Well, an hour and twenty, we're at. But yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, but that's media, right? Well, and that's what we produce here is media content. Yeah, uh, which we will do again next week because we're done for this week. I just proclaimed. I can't wait for the next uh, bit of wrestling uh, stuff you'll send to me to watch. Well, there'll definitely be a follow up to this at some point when there's something more to talk about. Um, yeah. Just so we, I because I find it fascinating what might happen. But uh, where can sure. people find you on the internet, Francis, and maybe even possibly a live thingy you do? Oh yeah, Super Geeked Up is tomorrow. So supergeekedup.com, go there. Um, I'm looking for questions, so go to is this love po- uh, podcast or is this love at uh, dot podbean dot com because I need questions. We need questions that we can answer for our podcast. So go there. That's like think the most important thing. That's number one right now. Like ask uh, important questions. Like should you anything? Should you I, I, cuddle after coitus, or should you dry off first and yeah. watch the magic bullet commercial? Sure. Even well, actually, that's the most important question. Really, is if you should watch the Magic Bullet commercial while most drying definitely. while drying off. That's the whipping blade. <laughs> Don't make me pull that up. I have the ability to. <laughs> um, I think it'll fucking oh, it's playing though. But anyway, um, yeah, Francis, there's where you find him, aka the other guy. Uh, sincere sarcasm dot net. You can find me on the internet at three hundred three underscore ninja on the twitters, three hundred three ninja on the Instagram. Uh, email at uh, the POI podcast at gmail.com. Call, voicemail, text, call into the show 314 764 7631. Look up POI podcast for everything else. You will find us there. Uh, that's everything for this week. Francis, thank you again as always. Thank you, everybody that's watching this live and everybody that downloads the audio later and everybody that watches the video later. You guys are all awesome. We love you. Tell your friends, come and participate. Come and hang Tell out. Maybe I'll be able to get better internet one day and I don't know what will happen. The show will be the same, but it'll be smoother. Uh, but that's everything. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. Bye.